everyone welcome back to my channel my name is Danny James and today we have an Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial on five music video effects that you can use and incorporate into your next project on my timeline I have a number of clips and we're going to be applying different effects onto them and see the different outcomes that we can get out of that you can see this clip it's taken from right above and it has not much going on and you're going to go to our effects tab if you cannot find the effects tab just go to windows and make sure effects is highlighted i'm going to search change sorry i'm going to search change color not change to color but change color i will go to the other one on another video so just drag and drop it to your timeline and then go to your effect controls tab here you have a set of options that you can choose and the first thing that you can note down is the color that you want to change using the eyedropper tool you can choose a color from your frame or you can alternatively go click right here and select the color that you want to alter manually so right now i'm just going to click right here i want to take it through a hue transformation i'm going to add a stopwatch to make a keyframe let's go a few frames ahead and let's take these let's go to towards the negative like that if we play it back this is what it looks like And you can see for these areas that look as if there is something distorted happening, it's because of the matching tolerance that we have chosen. If you bump it up, about 70 to 90%, everything becomes very neat. Now let's play it back. That's the first effect. You have a set of options that you can do. You can go to this last keyframe, you can take it as far as on the other end towards 100, 130, towards 180. That's what you can achieve with a change to color. And right where our effect ends, you can also make a cut to get things back to normal. Make sure this next clip doesn't have this effect, you can just delete it. And if you transition, this is how it transitions, it comes back. The next effect that we're going to look at is it's like a cloning transition and here's an example really this is how i did it how we're going to go about that this is the first section and the second clip begins here and what you want to do is go to the beginning of this area and export a frame of this thing you can export this frame and we can import it back into our project You can go find it on your project bin and here it is so if you lay it down here it starts with this frame what we want to do we want to make an outline of the subject so i'm going to quickly go to my effect controls and on my opacity area i'm going to take the free draw base here and you're going to make a mask around the subject you can just have a rough mask no need to make it perfect you can take your sweet time when you need to make a perfect mask but it doesn't need to be perfect it's a very fast effect so if i want to drag this just hold on alt and it gets you this arrow and you can push this anchor point like that we're going to we're making a rough mask around the subject so again it doesn't need to be perfect So that's the rough mask that you've made from this first frame of the subject. Now that you've done the outline, it's a matter of animating. Just click on your PNG and go to motion and you're going to add a keyframe for position. Let's take it somewhere there and make sure we go from, you can go from any direction. You can go from down, going up. Okay, sorry, I was supposed to invert these ones. So it's supposed to come from down, up. And how I do that, I make sure that this keyframe, the last keyframe, ends right there, right when the first frame of this other clip begins. So I'm going to click on my PNG and take this keyframe right there. And if you watch it back, dope. It looks really good when it, when it comes out. 
You can apply a couple of effects on the mask. You can go to your effects tab and maybe it's something like image control. Actually, you can even change the color of the subject. You can do a color balance on the RGB and practically have anything. So it can be something like that and it pops up like that. The next effect I'm going to be showing is the split frame merging effect. What happens is we get one frame and it gets split into two areas which come back together. Let me show, let me demonstrate how I do that. So the first thing I'll do is make a duplicate of this clip. I'll hold alt on my keyboard while dragging up. I'll highlight both clips and go to my effects folder and look for a crop effect. Here it is. I'll drag and drop it on my clips. The first thing we're going to be doing, let's just disable the track output of the second duplicate. And then this first one, let's take the cropping at 50%. What, ha what happens is that we disable the output on this half upper side of this clip. Let's re-enable it and disable the one that we've done any effect on. Now on this second clip, we're going to go on our crop effects and crop it from the bottom at 50%. You see what that makes such that if we enable everything, they are all here. But if I disable the first one, this is what happens. If I disable the other one, I see the top area. And the next thing we're going to be doing is we need to scale into this frame a bit. You'll see the reason why. I'll select a scaling of 120. This is what happens. Just look. Let me show you closely. I'll scale this to 120. It zooms in quite a bit. And I'll do the same for the top, for the bottom clip at 120. Just make sure they are similar. And the next thing we're going to be doing is adding a keyframe to position. And the keyframe for the position is just move the clip to the left or to the right. You see, we zoomed in so that we wouldn't have this black area everywhere. I know that it's like there. At the end of this transition or at the end of this cut, I'm going to return to reset the parameters and have everything back to default. So it comes, it kind of goes back in. You can do the same for the upper clip. You can drag it also, but let's add the keyframe and make sure it goes at the end such that at the end, everything comes back to normal and you can drag things to the other side to make, to create a very sweet illusion. Let's have them begin at the same area. Now, if you play it back, wow, that's really good. And you have many options that you can do here. You can make a significant differences in the clip. Or in this case, let's take an effect. Maybe it's the black and white. You can apply it on one area and we have this black and white here. It really differentiates the two clips in a good way. It goes on like that, it goes on like that, and they come back together. So that's a very easy effect that you can do. The next effect we're going to be looking at is the posterize time effect. You can find it in your effects tab. Just type in posterize. It should be under time. There is posterize under styling, but this is under time. You can pick a section in your clip. In this example, I'm going to be making a cut right here. I'm going to press it and make a cut. And I'll add this effect on this second cut the second area of this clip what it does you are able to choose the frame rate which you want the clip to work on so go to your effect controls tab and right under posterize time you can change the frame rate you can go as low as five and if you go a lower frame frame rate it means that per every second we'll see five frames or so you can make it as huge as 30 frames let's see what happens you can notice that when you go to a higher frame rate, you don't have much going on. And that's why I like to go to somewhere at 5 to 11. And this way, this is the results that you are able to get. So it's a really cute little trick that you can use on your clips. So that was the posterized time effect. And the last effect that we're going to be discussing is the mirror effect. The mirror effect is a really cool one that you can use to make trippy illusions to the viewer or to someone who's watching your video. What you happen is just go to your effects tab and search for the mirror. It should be under distort. Drag it and drop it on your clip on the timeline. Go to the effect controls right here and scroll down. You'll find the mirror. It has a reflection center and a reflection angle the first thing that you can do for now you can set the reflection angle at 90 degrees and it creates a two sets it's very trippy and you can always adjust the reflection center to accommodate where you want the clip to be seen 
you see you don't really have to work with a parameters set as soon as you've changed your angles you can shift this way down or way up but you want to see this That's one way to look at it. The other way, I will put it at 90 degrees and let everything stay the same. Go back to your effects tab, drag it once again. And if you go to effect controls, we have two effects. For now, let's disable this first mirror effect and see what is happening. Let's go for a reflection of angle of like 180 degrees. We'll adjust everything. Let's make the reflection center at 540. And there's other parameters at 250. This is what it looks like. This is a reflection angle of 180 degrees. You see it happens from left to right. It has this axis right there. Unlike this other one that you did, it had the angle right here. It slices horizontally, while well, this other one does it vertically. What happens is that when you combine both effects, you get more like another dimension. It's like four different reflections happening. I presume this was used in the Kanye West and Jay-Z video, so it's really cool. Just play around with these parameters and you can see what you might get. That's it from today's video. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something from it. Subscribe and give it a thumbs up and let's see you in the next video. Cheers.